at it once again with another weekend, another Theorycraft episode with myself, Jack. Boris is just up there in the corner behind me, our little pisshead Russian friend. Then over on the other side of the screen, who you see right there with all the ring lights all around him. And I got my Spidey lights because what are we talking about here? Well, the title's down below the video, so you should already know, unless you can't read. But anyway, on to this one, which is going to be about Spider-Man 3. Specifically Spider-Man 3, possibly Spider-Man 4. And the reason why we're going to talk about this is something which I've been wanting to have a bit of a discussion about for ages on here. Since with Spider-Man 3, there's been a multitude of problems ever since. And a lot of people definitely dislike it. And with one of those few people, uh, which is 95%. So with that, you had... Extremely loose plot holes. You had too many characters, too many villains. The plot, the whole general storyline was just an absolute mess. So what we're going on about here is how we can make Spider-Man 3 so much better and hopefully try and use the original draft for Spider-Man 4 and plop it in Spider-Man 3 to make it better. So without further ado, let's get, let's get ready to run! <laughs> yes, the... Spider-Man 3, it was it had so much potential because well, it was the third movie. Like more often than not, when you get a definitive trilogy, the third movie can be a bit iffy to a degree because it's trying to wrap up some things. But I think the thing is with that, it wasn't trying to wrap anything up. Like you say, there was supposed to be a fourth movie. Well, yeah, because it, it's not really a wrap-up, it's a continuation. But then the tone of it entirely felt like it was trying to wrap things up because they had three villains but they weren't full villains like i'd say you barely had a complete villain if you think about it like you had the sandman yeah, yeah sandman venom, venom and you had and... harry osborne green goblin <sighs> so just you had too many stories just in a like a fairly two hour slot yes but the issue is is like it wasn't even that they had too many villains. They just didn't know which one they wanted to be the main focus. Yeah. Like, it was cool they brought in the idea of Venom, but it was the design of it that really mucked me off quite oh, a lot. horrible. It would just look so scrawny because, like, obviously he's meant to, like, shapeshift to dependent who he is, or, like, part of. But even when Spider-Man first got the Spidey suit, to a degree, he was a bit bulkier than that. He wasn't, like, that skinny, but it just looked so weird. Yeah, but mind you, we did get Venom after that with Tom Hardy, which that Venom looked absolutely, looks absolutely yes. perfect, and that's how Venom should have been. How yes. he would have done it properly. But also, just with that, like, with the suit, with the suit for Spider-Man, yeah, it, it was fine. It was fine for a movie adaptation. Just, I would just wanted to see something more, um, more in a amalgamation with the like the comic books and the '90s cartoon. I wanted wanted to see something a bit more like that because originally, in like some old Sam Raimi, um, Sam Raimi, the director of the Spider-Man trilogy, um, there has been like so many different photos and images which have surfaced through the years as to what the original suit was going to look like, what the Venom suit was going to look like. And it was originally supposed to look like like it was in the 90s with a black suit and like the white spider. And mm. I was kind of, I kind of thought, oh, that might have looked actually quite good for film because like you say, like, yeah, I know you, they have to try and adapt it to a real world kind of place, a city, uh, habitation yeah, but, that or whatever. Doesn't... but the problem is when you try and make it too realistic it ends up not looking realistic <laughs> yeah it sort of it becomes so realistic that it's not realistic i mean the thing that i think they missed a really good opportunity with is the fact that they didn't make it seem like venom had a genuine like conscience it was just a living blob that screamed at people and that was it like, if you remember when he detaches in from Spider-Man, it's literally just a plot, a pile of goo going, <laughs> like a feral cat. Yeah. And it's just like, this is Venom. This is like an alien species. It would have been more interesting if you could have had, like, a dark voice of some sort. Maybe it could have been Tobey Maguire's voice, voice modulated in some way. 
that made him like think like dark twisted ideas like to influence him that way because the main reason why he got rid of the suit was because it made him aggressive if you remember in the comics and yeah, in the tv it enhances, show it enhances certain characteristics yeah yes so that was the thing that i think was missing most from that concept of that venom is that it just didn't seem like it had much of an influence apart from that horrible dance scene do you remember the one i'm on about <laughs> oh, oh, oh my like, god i know a lot of people like some people actually really like it but i'm sorry but that is no no oh, no oh like... god let me <laughs> let me just put up like an image a sec if you can bear with me ah so youtube you can't come after us for this one <laughs> hopefully or, not hopefully or maybe not. the thing or maybe the things that boris says which might get us thrown off probably but like that entire dance scene it was just... quite well choreographed but it was toby Maguire on his own that just made it so but yeah but bad. it's just funny thing is you even had gwen stacy in it which again made the film too busy oh god because that was... like gwen stacy wasn't even a side character she was barely she, I felt like she was barely in the thing but that's what i find really annoying they had so many people trying to squeeze in here there and everywhere and it was just like they were trying to finalise the whole concept of their Spider universe. I mean, I don't know what they were attempting with this movie, other than the well, fact they just wanted to Easter egg everything they could in fifty minutes or less. Well, the main meat, the main meat and bones of um, the spite of the Spider Man. Uh, we're gonna get on to like our like new concept and everything for Spider-Man three, maybe four. We're just gonna try and just get the general gist of the problems just out of the way first, folks. Um, but with Spider-Man three, the general main meat and bones of this was the plot of Sandman. It was mainly Spider-Man, Sandman, which I would have been happy if it was just Spider-Man versus Sandman for this one, because they already had a good plot going forward that he was mm. the original ac accidental shooter of Uncle Ben. So yes. I would have been happy if it was just that Spider-Man versus Sandman arc and then leading into like the end where he eventually forgives him. And I think mm -hmm. I would have been a lot more satisfied with that film. But instead, we had too many things smashed together just trying to fill time. And it just it failed massively. So I would have been happy with just Spider-Man versus Sandman. Yeah. This movie has more plot holes than Swiss cheese. Like yeah. Swiss cheese. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this is the thing is the i didn't realize so i was looking into it today of course there's another character that they squeezed in randomly kurt connors aka the lizard i forgot he was in that movie he was only in it for like what a, a blip minute of a or so yeah it was literally not long after spidey had been exposed to the venom symbi symbiote and it was basically warned to like stay away from it that yeah. was it but I, it's just like such a random blip of a moment of a movie. Like, <laughs> it was so weird how they kept chopping and changing the mood of the movie. Yeah, I never then, really understood why Harry became the Green Goblin. It kind of That's... it kind of felt like we had multiple films all in one film because then you go from one plot, then you go to another plot, and then you go to another plot, then you go back to this one, and then back to that one. But then having Harry is the Green Goblin. Oh my God, how friggin' awful that was. That was terrible. Oh, oh God. I mean, let me see if I can find the right image, if you bear with me. In this, like, what do you call it? Like, paint, it's like kind of like paintball armor. <laughs> oh, it's not even that. It paintball the... armor sprayed green. <laughs> oh, God, it's just. I mean, oh, Sam, like Sam Raimi, you're a brilliant director. You've done so many good films, but what was you thinking? <laughs> like, this is the best. I could, <laughs> this was the best I could find, like as a full like show off of the entire thing. But you have not only do you have him on a hoverboard instead of it being like the actual glider, whatever reason. I don't know why they had to revamp the glider. I don't know. It's a surfboard. But it was also the fact that he has a random samurai sword. Yeah, plasma sword, yeah. <laughs> but the other thing as well is, like, he doesn't look anything goblin-like. He looks like he's literally 
you know when you've got people that parachute out of planes, but they also have like one of those snowboards on them at the same time? That's yes. literally what he looks like with this, because he's got the jumpsuit and then just the hoverboard and I was gonna I was gonna say, <sighs> is that a Power Rangers nineteen nineties film reference? <laughs> Almost, almost. You know what I'm on about, though. Yeah, I do. I remember. <laughs> but, like, I would have thought it would have been better if Harry... Fair enough. If he was in the film, say if we can't change Harry being in the film, I would have had him put his dad's suit on. I would have had it so... Yes, there would have been the suit, but he would have modified it to a degree where... Maybe change the colour slightly. I don't know. I would add the old... like The purple sort of tunic or whatever it is that he had over the top if you remember with the green goblin it was like a shirt over the costume yeah like a vest type thing yeah but it was because the thing that i always found really odd about the sam raimi one while it was a really cool idea why was it just literally it was a green goblin suit but not like the like aesthetic of the rest of the green goblin because he's never been just the goblin suit it was like clothing on top of that as well yeah, mind you, like we maybe could have like seen a more kind of maybe a bit more of a comic book true flair to a realistic kind of outfit, but it's just the main point of it was you either had two plot points to choose from. You could either have Sandman or you could have the new Green Goblin. But in that same time, that is a calamity in itself because it's not it's too, not enough progression that we saw. It was just far too... It was just too fast of a film. I think, personally, it would have worked better if Sandman was the main focus. You had you could keep Venom to a degree, but the idea being that Pete being exposed to the Venom symbiote was causing him to be more aggressive towards his villains, and it was Harry that had to bring him back from the darkness because he saw what it did to his dad. Yeah, like I. So at least it would have made more sense because it just. James Franco is an interesting actor, but it was the entire third movie he spent like being butt hurt for like half of it, became the Green Goblin, realized that he was in the wrong, helped out Spidey, and then he dies, I think, at the end of it, if I remember. Yeah, he does. He gets stabbed by his own glider surfboard thing by Venom. It's just... No, I just thought, literally, like, watching it as an adult, I re- like, when, um... 2007, so I was... Yeah, I was only, like, 12, 13. And, like, as honest, I just can't... Now watching it as an adult, when I rewatch it, and I just go, what was the freaking point? What was yeah. the point? <laughs> no, I know. This is it. There's so many things in this movie that just seem to be squished in just for the sake of being there. It feels like kind of like two or three movies all in one. Yeah, and it just it didn't pan out. I mean, the guy that you had for Eddie Brock I can't remember. Again, it was another interesting idea that they just couldn't get their head right on. Like, there's the scene where he gets absorbed by the Venom symbiote but it was such a stupid scene where he literally picks up a girder from a skyscraper and goes Bram! and whacks Spidey across the entire street or something, if I remember. I'm across sure there's the... like a... He whacks him quite far, like it's quite no. a bit of a distance. No, it's in the uh, that it's in that like building that's being constructed. Mm. Because then Spidey uses all the girders and makes it go do 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 and makes a lot of sound and Venom's and it's gone. Like, oh god! It although, was so... like, although the scene in the bell tower, they did keep true to the co- in the comic and the cartoon. Yes, I would like that they kept that. Yeah, but the thing is, the movie was so busy with everything else, it kind of gets a bit lost. Yeah, I mean. So that's obviously why we're here to see how we can make Spider-Man 3 better. Yes. So because so obviously if you're gonna have like this third film, let's like, say it is the cutoff point that there isn't gonna be a number four, you have to have a big blow-off movie. So what can you what can you do? Yes, it would have been like if you add loads of characters, it does make it too busy. But if you add a group of characters you have something to play off from that. So where do we go from there? 
Well, me and you were talking about the idea that if it was going to be a multiple sort of villain arc, that it should have been based off the idea of the Sinister Six. Now, the Sinister Six is a namesake team of villains throughout Spidey's career. It's chopped and changed over the years. There have been some kiss consistency, but it works more interestingly as that because the problem is, is that you get some villains that are known to be independent, some are quite conniving, and some are just there for the sake of the chaos. Yeah, because we were thinking back to some of our favourite uh, Spider-Man cartoons and how they kind of bleed into one another. And like mm. we were saying that some of our favourite stories are the ones where you had, you had uh, Morbius and then I think Blade came into it. Then mm -hmm. Punisher came into it. Then you had yep. the man spider thing. Then you had yep. Craven the Hunter hunting the man spider. Then you had Vulture after that. Then you had Scorpion. And it all kind of bled into each other really nicely. And we had like six or so episodes or maybe a bit yes. more. And it told a story that was really good. And like soon they only had like half an hour to like tell each episode in. It was really good. Really brilliant. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were saying about the idea that maybe the Man Spider plot could have been a better use of Spider Man 3 to show that his powers were evolving even further. Because from each movie, like the first and second ones at least, there was a bit of a power transition. Because it was the second movie where his powers kept fluxing in and out, if you remember. Yeah. What was that reason again? I can never remember. To be honest, like, because I, I remember I was going to do a video on it, but the main kind of synapsis from all the research which I've gotten is that, you know, had the trauma of um, Uncle Ben dying, and if you watch the whole film in sequence and you watch, like, Spider-Man 1 in sequence and Spider-Man 2, it makes a bit more sense, because he had, mm -hmm. like, Uncle Ben dying, he couldn't get the girl, no money, like, crap, no money, crap job, obviously it said Uncle Ben, having to deal with, like, should I be Spider-Man or should I be Peter Parker, dealing with that crisis, having to fight off crime, go through like so much hurt and everything and bat and, like battering over his body, maybe guilt over Norman Osborn. And basically, I can't remember where I saw it, but it was kind of the explanation of a mixture of PTSD and maturing as well, all combined together. So that's why, and then you think, oh, like when you mature and everything, it's all like your hormones change, your emotions change, that kind of thing. So PTSD and a mixture of maturing as well. Mm-hmm. Which kind but, of does make a bit of sense, but... Kind of, but it was... Again, there are a lot of things with these just, movies where they just sort of left it, it a bit iffy. a bit iffy. random. Mm. But the other thing as well is that we did talk about the idea of having Kingpin as part of this because it made more sense to have him as a very pinnacle villain to bring in this team. So he was pretty much the main the main baddie with the Sinister Six. Yes. Well, he was more sort of the main bad guy to the entire of New York. Yeah, sure, yeah. But the other thing as well is... Who would we have as Kingpin? Like, if we could cast anybody, because... So far, there's only been two live adaptations. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, no, because um, we had Michael Clark Duncan, yeah, a black actor from the Green Mile, who I didn't think he was. I didn't think he was bad, to be honest. I just wish he could have shot shot a bit more in. But he, mind you, he wasn't a crap film, so you can't crap on him totally. No, and no. Like, he's passed away since. So God rest his soul. But yeah. Um, someone in our comments has just decided to give us an idea of John Goodman. Now, I recognize that name, but for the life of me, I cannot remember what uh, he looks like. Could you please give us, like, a the name's ringing a bell, but could you give us, like, something? Uh, like... I'm, it's the guy that played as Fred Flintstone in the live um, Flintstones movie, if you remember. Oh, yeah, because he's done, like, quite a lot of serious roles since. Which, yeah, like, he uh, has. What was he called? Uh, Cloverfield. I think. Yeah, he was in Clover, um, Clover Lane, yeah, Cloverfield Lane or wherever it was. Yeah. Do that. There we go. I mean, if he were to shave his head, I could kind of see it. I, I see it, but he would have to be quite a physical actor, though. But mind you, I don't know, would CGI come into it? Because like he's a big hulking mother effer. 
you know. Yeah, the thing is with Kingpin, he's quite a big dude, so... He just runs into you and goes, bosh, that's it. (laughs) Yeah, that's the thing I used to love about the 90s series, was the fact that despite being such a big dude, that he was really menacing. Like, I think it wasn't often he actually got his own hands dirty, but when he did, it was just over in seconds. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Because I think I remember there was an episode where there was Tombstone, if you remember, this, uh, uh, that weird mob guy. Oh, God, I forgot about Tombstone. <laughs> yeah, and there's a bit where he questions Kingpin because he doesn't think he's like got enough gumption to be who he is. And it like he literally knocks him out cold. And this is Tombstone. Like This guy is literally, like well, a walking Tombstone, pretty much. But... Basically sort of like Hammerhead's rejected brother. <laughs> oh, God. That's the thing I think that has been missing from a lot of Spidey stuff is that in New York, there is a lot of different factions of mobs. There's a like... lot of different gangs, you know. It's a mm. bit like Warriors from, 19... from the 1970s. A little yeah, bit. but that, again, is another thing that's been missing from Spidey because we haven't had it in any of the movies so far. It was used a lot in the 90s TV show because Kingpin was the overseer and then we had, like, different factions, but... Again, he's trying to figure out how that could interlace to the rest of it, because if that were the case, oh, God, that would be a hell of a busy movie, though. Although now, I reckon now we might have to, because I've got the list in front of me, that we might have to scrap Blade for, we Mm. might might have to scrap Blade for this film, because we've got Morbius coming out soon. So I reckon it like Morbi- the Morbius film and like Tom Holland Spider Man they're going to come together at some point, and yeah. then you can then with the new with like the new Blade coming out at some point either can like jump into that, but then you can introduce Blade into the Spider Man film as well. Yeah, I mean the thing is, I am looking forward to Morbius because it is such a bizarre character. I'm looking forward to how it's going to bleed into the new Spider-Man films and such. Yeah. I mean, there is there has been confirmation that both Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield are going to turn up in Spidey, at least. Yeah. So it's going to be interesting to see how they explain who they are and like, the, re- like, the continuation of their stories, because... Technically, they both ended on, like, cliffhangers anyway. Yeah. Biggest one, of course, has been Andrew Garfield's because you literally just saw him fight Rhino and that was it. Yeah, because, like, they kind of went, oh, no, this film sucks and then canned it. (laughs) Well, it was more that at the time they were in talks with the MCU to bring in Spidey for Civil War and they were like, yeah, you can have him for the moment, but we want him back. And then it get back and forth, back and forth. It's just, like... Just give us Spidey in the MCU. Sony, you've got enough things to deal with. You've got your own bloody music and everything. I say, you've got enough friggin' money as well. Yeah. Uh, but, no. Morbius is definitely going to be very dark and twisted. And it's... I know, obviously, that it will link into Blade eventually. But I do wonder whether it would how much it's going to influence Spidey as well, because obviously Spidey being so light-hearted, you have to try and slightly rework things, but not too much, otherwise you lose the entire tone. Yeah, but mind you, there is a What Culture episode out there, uh, a little bit of a plug for What Culture, of like the darkest things that Spider-Man has done, and mm. it makes you look at Spider-Man very differently. But yes. mind you, if you forget the Sinister Six idea... You've got the whole... What? It, it was in my mind just a second ago. The man spider, that's it. Yeah. The man spider, you can introduce Craven into that. Oh, yes. I see, want to see Craven. So do I. Because the man spider thing was probably the best story in the TV series growing up because it proved the point that was Spidey like a, was evolving it was like a further. Three parter, I think. Well, the thing is, it occurred quite a few times, like, because first off, he ended up with just like an extra pair of arms, like two extra pairs. Wasn't uh, Peter Parker trying to cure himself? 
Yes, I think he was trying to give up the whole mantle of Spider-Man, but he had to try and find a way of curing himself, but he ended up screwing it up. Yeah. Which then led into the research for Kurt Connors to do become the lizard, if you remember. Yes. So, hmm. But which Spidey of the live action ones would you want to see as the man spider? Hmm. Honestly, Cause... as much as I love Tom Holland, I have to go with Tobey Maguire. Well, it because Tobey thing... Maguire, in like Brothers, for example, he can play a really serious character, and mm. he is really good at that. And I just feel that Toby Maguire, like Toby Maguire, I think it might be the same for you as well. Obviously, now we got Tom Holland and such, but Toby Maguire is the Spider-Man I grew up loving. So those were the films yeah. I watched when I was younger. So it has to be Toby Maguire for me for that one. But then obviously you got Tom Holland, then it's just how much of an idol he is for kids now. I just I, I don't necessarily see that happening unless they want to take a massive risk with his character and so on. Mm. Because like if you, you're gonna do the man spider, it's if you're gonna do it for real, if you think about it, it's gonna be a pretty graphic visual. Oh god, yeah, it's good because oh god, that would scare a hell of a lot of kids. Like it would have to be PG thirteen. On the cusp of because oh, th minimum. That's gonna be scary. That's gonna be scary. Um and then, and then we were talking about um like if we're gonna introduce the man spider, if you're gonna introduce Craven, we like kind of like well we didn't settle, but I mentioned Jeffrey Dean Morgan or Negan from The Walking Dead, as he mm -hmm. kind of looks like Craven already. <laughs> Yeah, he's got the gruff outer exterior. He looks very skilled in being able to track down random creatures. But, again, it's trying to figure out how he fits into the rest of the MCU timeline. Because if that were the case, I can imagine he'd be intertwined in certain circles. Maybe Ulysses Claw, because he'd probably... Needs him for like certain missions, but then I don't know. Would it be a really twisted idea that he was part of Hydra, as like a part of a training scheme? Oh, oh, this is the thing. Oh, crap. <laughs> well, th this is why we have these discussions because it's all well and good adding in random characters. But it's trying to make it fit within what's already happened as part of the MCU. Well, with um, you've just tweaked my memory. You obviously remember like Doctor Kurt Connors with his research, we're trying to regrow his arm and everything mm -hmm. that ends up developing into the lizard. But also, I cannot remember what that laser beam shooty thingy is called. I cannot remember the machine's name. Where you know he gets blasted, he blasts himself and then grows an arm and then becomes lizard. Because also that's the same machine which is used on Scorpion. Yes, it is. And also Vulture, I believe. Hmm. And okay. then you had like a whole old man Spider Man, but then you had like Vulture who's trying to stay young and yeah. so on. Yeah. Because See... it depends, because every time you introduce a different character it creates a whole new exciting story you can tell. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, is because of the way that Vulture's been completely rewritten for the MCU, oh, God. we wouldn't be able to use that. That's the thing that annoys me because... <sighs> Would you be able to... We, although we could bring in Scorpion, though. Yeah, you could bring in Scorpion. I'd love to see Scorpion, but... Oh, but like, would you love to see, like, a whole, like, mech suit with, like, the tail and everything? Hmm. I would, but I'm trying to figure out in terms of who would be the ones behind it. I mean, you could technically have it as, like, Justin Hammer, because he yes. was brilliant in Iron Man 2. That actor has been so underplayed. Like, he was a really cool character. I thought it was really good. Oh, yeah, just when he's got, like, the whole missile and everything. It's like, it can, like, destroy a bunker and everything. He goes, I call it the ex-wife. Yes. <laughs> the most dangerous missile known to man. I call it the ex-wife. Yes. But he would... 
that would be quite an interesting thing. But then again, we can we maybe we can't use. Sh- I don't know. Maybe would we be able to use Shocker? But he's kind of already been done. But Shocker's I, been done twice. I know because I wanted the Shocker from the co- from the cartoon. I wanted that Shocker. Mm. I mean, the other thing as well with Scorpion, could you do it in such a way that the suit itself was actually technology from Wakanda, so it ties into other people? Or maybe Hydra? I don't know. Well, the thing is, what we both said to a degree is that for the most part of Spidey's career in the MCU is that every villain is linked to Tony Stark. And it's like, that's good for the first film because at Let least him it's die! Show- Let him stay yeah. dead! <laughs> but the thing is, is like Spider-Man is not just like Tony Stark's ward. He's a, like a namesake of the Avengers. He looks up to all of them. So it would have worked out better if each of his villains represented a different member of the Avengers team to a degree. Because like I say, Vulture works with Iron Man. You could have Shocker. Where would Shocker? You can't have Shocker in Iron Man, I don't think. No, but... You could have it linked to maybe Hawkeye or Black Ooh. Widow as like an ex-spy. Like an assassin Shocker of sorts. Black Panther would be cool because of the kinetic suit. Yeah, that's true. Or I've just thought of another plot as well, which is see, it's going to sound a bit stupid to like any people watching this in the future or whatever, but a really underrated character that from the cartoons I feel was so underrated. Um... Actually, before I get onto that, I'm just going to say, if we ever introduce like this character, how the heck do you rationalise Hammerhead? How do you rationalise? <sighs> I don't know. I mean, I don't know how you're going to rationalise that. <sighs> you could do it that may- maybe you could do it as the the mob was trying to replicate Captain America serum for themselves for their own means and it ends up mutating mutating his head so he ends up like having a weird hammer head uh, poss- poss- possibly because that's the one thing that's sta- been a main staple of the MCU is that everybody wanted to make their own version of Captain America's su- super soldier serum yes. that's how he ended up with Hulk it's how he ended up with other characters along the way and in the MCU so far well same with a really underrated character who was a scientist as well which we remember from the cartoons. And if you don't remember Fox Kids, then you might be too young when you're watching this because Fox Kids was the really good show. Yes. Um, And we had like a character which I spoke about, which would be a really good Outland villain as well, which is The Spot. Oh, yes. And I said to you... Yeah? I said to you that there was only one man that was perfectly capable of playing him. Jim Carrey. Oh, yes. (laughs) But the spot, for those of you who are wondering who we're on about, this guy had, he was experimenting with the idea had, like, of dimensional kind of, portals. What do you call it? He could like place portals anywhere and he could like take a car, he could take a car from like a city, from like city street and put it on top of the Empire State Building. Yes. He could like change his shape in like, say if, um, if he put a portal in front of Spider-Man, so say if Spider-Man's about to punch the spot. He could create a portal in front of Spider-Man, so when his arm goes through the portal, Spider-Man punches himself. Yes. So basically, he could be multiple different places all in the same fight. He was a really brilliant character. He was such a bonkers character. It's such a weird name for a villain, though. Like, but except he like could create sort of like black holes, which he could like move through. But when you would move, when you move through those those holes you go through i'm not sh- i'm trying to figure out if it's some kind of dimensional like kind of a doorway system because it was it's really difficult to explain but he was just a really freaking brilliant character and then i think he died through going what through one of his own black holes because he had to destroy the actual uh, kind of device which he had which created them it's a really strange concept but he would have been if he's going through dimensions would be a perfect villain for ant-man as well but if we're going to adapt it to spidey it's kind of unlimited to what he could do and you could play it off in the same way as they did in the cartoons as well mm-hmm. 
I mean, the thing is as well is the spot itself, the costume is such a basic idea that it Polka can't dot. go wrong. But you literally need one of those white suits that you use as a painter's overalls and then just put black dots all over it and you'd be done. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he looks stupid, but he's got really good abilities, though. Mm. But the other thing as well is... <sighs> Majority of Spidey's villains have been science-based. So it'd be trying to figure out how the logistics of the science works, because they do try to explain it, as far as I've seen in the MCU, how certain scientific aspects work. Yeah. But then it's trying to make the idea of the portals work. Would it be via pin particles or would it be something else that's already there was been mentioned? About pin particles in the cartoon. It was just something they created himself. I cannot remember yes. how they created it himself. Yeah, I think they try to label it as something like antimatter. It's always antimatter. When it comes to like teleportation, it's just some matter that's anti. <laughs> but... <laughs> yeah, just call it anti anything, like anti coffee, which is decaf, you know? So kind of the same thing. But yeah, so you got that. You got like the man spider story. You've got the sort of it worked but also it goes along with the vulture arc, but the old man Spider Man story where he ends up being turned really young. No, he ends mm. up being turned really old, sorry. Um, yes. I can't remember if he has his power. He's old and he has his powers or what? No, he's he's old and he has his powers. But that's a really interesting story where he can't... Well, I know he knows who he is. Like, he's the old man version of himself. And that's a really quite deep kind of story as well. As, like, he looks a lot like Uncle Ben in that mm. cartoon. Well, that was the thing I think was quite bittersweet because he goes to see Aunt May and she... She thinks that's Uncle Ben back from the dead. To a degree, yes. But I don't know how you could do it for the MCU because, like I say, Vulture's been rewritten to the point where he doesn't have powers, he just has a suit. I mean, the only way it could technically work is if the, he decides to upgrade his suit's power sort source and it malfunctions so he has to like siphon life energy from other people to keep himself alive yeah so so we've had so we've had that you can't do hydra man because he's already been done uh you can't we can't do electro yet because he's coming back well it's Isn't supposedly it? Jamie Foxx is coming back. They haven't confirmed whether or not it is Electro. I didn't like his Electro. I'm sorry. Oh, God, it looked no, awful. No. And then all, but, but also an even worse Green Goblin as well. Yeah. It's just... That Green Goblin looks freaking horrendous. I don't know what they were trying with that. Like, it's basically it Harry Osborn on meth. Pretty much. <laughs> like, he leaves, it's like he's Harry Osborne on meth and cocaine at the same time because he goes... Like, <laughs> like, I don't understand how after the Green Goblin we first got, how we've not been able to get anything close since. Well, there is one person we haven't mentioned. Instead of going back to the Green Goblin, the Hobgoblin. Yeah, see... That one I would love to see, but the problem is, is that the Hobgoblin is technically Ned, which is um, Spider-Man's friend in the MCU, because there is no Harry Osborn in the MCU so far. Right. But there is Ned, who becomes the Hobgoblin in the comics. Yes. But again, you need to establish Green Goblin to a degree to make the Hobgoblin. Exactly. I... Uh, so much of Spidey's villains, at least in the 90s TV series, seem to establish around the Green Goblin aspect. Because if you remember, Green Goblin was the first baddie, and then he recruits other people along the way because he wants to try and get extra help, and that's how you meet the Sinister Six and everyone else. So yeah, whether you could I use the same... Mean... Yeah. Whether or not you could use the same aspect with Vulture being the one that brings everybody in could work, 
but to what end? Because uh, when you see the end of Homecoming, he bumps into the guy who looks like Scorpion, but he, well, he, I think he is Scorpion, but he's not had the suit yet. But basically says, like, um, do you know who the spider boy is or whatever? And he pretends to, like he doesn't know because he does know who Spidey is. So to a degree, he's not a full on bad guy vulture. He just was trying to find a way of making money. Well, we can. Well, one thing we can do from the Spider-Man from the Amazing Spider-Man 2, we can scrap Rhino pretty much. Mm -hmm. But we can create a new Rhino, though. Yes. Because Rhino in the TV series, he was an ex-con that was experimented on, if I remember. I think so. And he literally had, like, a Rhino cosplay. <laughs> Pretty much. They gave him, like, this giant uh, rubber suit of sorts. Then they injected him with steroids that made him, like, stronger. And the suit was somehow able to contain it within that so he couldn't hurt himself or something um i mean that would be quite an interesting thing to see it's just trying to figure out as to why like who would be the one behind it all to fund it well it's gonna have to be again the sinister six the kingpin mm. that yeah well then now we've got spider-man 2 no not spider-man 2 Venom 2, which is going to have Carnage in it, mm. which the, yeah, the Venom films, they're eventually either Spider-Man's going to bleed into Venom or Venom's going to bleed into Spider-Man. Uh, we're going to get Spider-Man versus Venom or Spider-Man versus Car they're gonna, It's going to happen eventually. It's, it's going to intermingle. It's inevitable. <sighs> yeah, I can't wait. I'm looking forward to the idea of them like working together to a degree, like the, in all the films working as a, like one unit. But it's trying to make it all work because, like I say, Venom normally came from Spidey first and then goes to Eddie Brock. But they've done it the other way around so far, unless they find some nonsense reason that he somehow existed before. It's just yeah, yeah. Like obviously, if you're gonna like, if you're gonna do that, you're gonna have to go like if we're gonna like scrap all that. And obviously, we got like MCU and everything. Although, mind you, is Venom in the MCU? I don't know. Like, as far as I'm aware, anything that Sony does is in their own little thing, unless right, they so, say otherwise. Oh, but my God, we're going to get... That means we're, there's a possibility we could get a tweak of that story. But I think now, because it's so popular, there's no other way you can get around it, apart from it going from Eddie to possibly Spider-Man. I I don't know, because then it's going to go completely against the story of how it happens. It's going to go completely against the comics. Well, this is it. Like, This is why I hate the fact that movies get shimmied about to different companies because they own the rights to it. It doesn't matter who you own the rights to. At the end of the day, you have to forward think to the idea that there is a possibility they could be bought back from somebody else. Yeah. And that's where Spidey's gone wrong for the most part. Like, don't get me wrong, I love the Spidey films. It's given kids a lot of interesting stuff to watch that isn't just purely the Avengers. But it's hard work to try and make it Spidey as his own thing because Spidey has so many interesting stories on his own, but it does kind of help to have the rest of the MCU intermingle as well. Well, mind you, like, that was the kind of the beauty of what Stan Lee did. Because I remember a documentary about Spider-Man, which I don't know if it's on YouTube. It might be. And it was in like an extra kind of thing on Spider-Man 1, I think, in the extra features. But mm. like the thing is, like the beauty with um, the beauty with Spider-Man and what Stan Lee was doing, because he was like, every issue was going to be different. And Peter Parker was just like the average guy who had so many problems that that inspired Stan Lee and like Steve Ditko to come up with loads of new villains. So that's why we got so many great villains out of it for Spidey to fight. But obviously we've grown up with, we've seen the very birth of superhero movies pretty much. We've seen the birth of superhero yeah. films. And then like we've seen like the MCU from when it was born. And then we've gone forward to where it was, 
quite simple the way it was done and then gradually over time as we've gotten older and the years have passed it's gotten more and more and more complicated to the point where we can only go by certain continuity so like mcu continuity so this is where we're like like we spoke about last time about when you try to introduce mutants and such now mm. you can't go back to x-men or anything because it's too complicated now so now you've got to try and drum up new stories and new explanations so this is why doing Spidey now and doing these villains is really hard because it's where do they fit in? Yeah, this is why I'm glad that we do have the other Spideys coming together eventually as some sort of perhaps minor Spider-Verse story. I hope but so. I've been wanting to see that. Like, cause that's my favourite episode in the cartoons. But the thing is as well is like, it's only three Spideys that we got so far. I mean, there is the, the Jap Japanese Spider-Man. You could do a subtle hint to that. Although, but that's been it. Although we... Oh, no, but could you? Because then that is going to boggle the minds of so many people, including us. Because obviously, I was asking you because I got really confused. Like, is... Like, because then I was thinking, is Ben Riley the real Peter Parker? And, like, the Peter Parker we see is Ben Riley, Or, like, you know. <laughs> well... <laughs> In the comics, I believe that the one that thought he was Ben, well, goes by Ben Riley, is supposed to be the real Spider Man, but he just goes by Ben Riley instead. And then the clone one ends up being the one that goes by Pete Parker. But I, that's another thing that I hope to God that they don't ever touch. Like, Clone Saga is a great concept, uh. don't get me wrong. Because like, it introduced the idea of Ben Riley and Kane. Like, it was two aspects of Spidey that are a bit more dark. Yeah, and obviously you had the alternate versions of all the different Spider-Men, like the Armored Spider, like the Peter Parker who's a billionaire and stuff like yeah. that. But the thing is, like, Clone Saga is such a complicated construct for the MCU <sighs> that you can't squeeze it in, like, to two hours. Like, it's impossible. You can't do it. No, but then the other thing is, like, why would you want to? Because he's only a kid. I mean, the only thing is, is, like, the reason why he was cloned in the first place is because of a baddie called the Jekyll, which, again, is another spidey villain that we've not seen yet. And it's trying to figure out, if anything, he would have been more interesting for the amazing Spider-Man Spider movies if he'd have got a trip like a final film, like a Sp Amazing Spidey 3, you could have had the Jekyll clone Gwen Stacy like he did in the comics, which could have been really, like, weird or for Spidey. the story about the clone Mary Jane as well? Oh, God, that was... <laughs> oh, I hated that one. Oh, that boggled my mind to no end. Yeah, but then she just, like, disappears into a puddle. Yeah, that was the... Huh? It, she just reminded me of the witch from Wizard of Oz. I'm melting! Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> that, that whole story thing with Mary Jane and that show was just... Ugh. That was the worst bit. Towards the end, they didn't know what to do and they left it on the cliffhanger because she her clone died. Spidey ends up going around the multiverse to try and find her and he never finds her and that was how it ended, if you remember. Yeah, and then one of the very last episodes was when Spider-Man meets the actor who's playing him and meets yes. Stan Lee. <laughs> yeah, that was a really mind-boggling moment, Although, to be fair. you can't do that now because now the god of Marvel is now gone. Mm. Well, supposedly before he did pass away, he did do, I think, 12 cameos that they could CGI into their future movies. Uh, but, but it's yeah. not good. Yeah, it's again. It's just gonna feel a bit hollow. Yeah, just because you know it's it's not really the man, you know. No. But is there any more you want to add to this before we shoot off? Yes, there is. Just one more. Um, one character we've not seen, which is not a villain, but we spoke about this character in the past before, and I have a feeling we're gonna get this person eventually. I really cannot wait to see a live adaptation of Madam Web. Yes. Oh my God, she would Michelle be perfect. Michelle Pfeiffer, like you said. Yes. 
I mean, she's not technically a villain. She's just a very obscure character. A really cool character, though. I mean, I would love for her first to cameo in Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. Perfect because to in. Yes, because she safeguards the the life web, I think she called it, in the show. It was... I think the, so. Something You're like that. But, but basically, the whole concept was that she could see the many strands of reality that intermingled into this massive web of life, which explained the whole multiverse thing, which then would be perfect to like interject the random Spider-Man for Spidey 3. Because then she could literally go, right, I need you, I need you, and I need you. And that's where it makes more sense to have Doctor Strange as a cameo as well. Because I believe Doctor Strange is meant to be in Spidey 3. Yes. So, again, like, unless they completely skim over that concept, I don't see why he'd be relevant. Nor do I. But just before we go, oh, folks, we do have some bits and bobs for you to have a look at. We do actually have a shop on Redbubble. So come check us out. Down below is the link. I shall also put it on our channel. And also, look at the shirt as well. Yeah, you can buy. Let's get ready to rant. You can buy. Let's get ready to rant, as I just said. But we've also got more plot holes than Swiss cheese. And, of course, the standard logos. So give us a look on that page. We would appreciate you buying a little bit in Bob's for Christmas, as me and Jack would like a little bit of help this year but we can't force you to of course buy our crap <laughs> <laughs> so thanks for joining us this week we will be back next week it will be me speaking i don't know what the topic is yet because i haven't had a chance to find anything fun to talk about but again thanks for joining us and we'll see you all soon laters <laughs>